control. Breach in five, four, three. What's up, guys? I'm Uncle Freedom, coming to you on another glorious and well-deserved day off. And today, we're going to look at Bugging in Uncomfortable Truths, Volume 2. So if that sounds fun and interesting to you, go ahead, like, subscribe, tell a friend. Over 10,000 subscribers climbing our way towards 11,000 as we speak. It's been freaking amazing. As always, if you're looking to get in touch with me, it is at Uncle Freedom 213 on Facebook or Instagram. And if you're in a lot of those Facebook groups like Mid-Tier Snobs or uh, Don't Be Poor or Plate Carrier Groups, things like that, and you see a guy by the name of Uncle Freedom comment on it, it's me. So yay for that. And that's awesome. I just jack John Lovell's yay for that thing. Anyway, um, I am there in the websites portion of Facebook or Instagram uh, and on Instagram, it's in the bio. There is a link there that will take you to my Linktree account where all of the affiliates of the channel exist. People like Coltac, Gun Mag Warehouse, Dry Fire Mag, Morn Tactical, lots of great stuff. Good people out there. Uh, you can also find me at UncleFreedom213 at Outlook.com. So bugging in volume two, this comes on the heels of the really successful Uncomfortable Truths of Preparedness, volumes one through four. Also the Bug Out Bag, Uncomfortable Truths, volume one through three. Lots more stuff on the way. Be sure to check out the Bags of Preparedness Saga videos where I deep dive kind of the methodology and thought process behind things like your get home bag, your bug out system, and even your EDC bag. So, bug out, bugging in, Uncomfortable Truths, Volume 2. Here we go. Number one. The world, as you know, it may have actually ended. But Mother Nature still exists and gets a vote in whatever you do. That means simple things like tornadoes, hurricanes, snowstorms, floods. Those are all still in existence. They didn't just start existing when we had civilized society. So in addition to all of the things you are already going to have to deal with in a world without law or T.O. Tawaki, you are also going to have to deal with Mother Nature, whether you like it or not. And she is absolutely mean and does not care whether you live through it or not. Thank the poor people in Texas during the snow and ice storms. So that would be number one. Number two, we covered this in the uh, preparedness video, and we're gonna touch on it here too, which is smells travel. So I understand that you've made significant efforts to make sure that when you bug into your home that you will be just fine and uh, you're going to cook and you've got all this stuff, but again, not how you think it's gonna go, but if you're grilling, like how often have you smelled a guy grilling down the street and be like, damn, that smells really good. Now envision that in a world where people aren't eating very well anymore. Everybody's kind of hungry. And all of a sudden you smell some goodness coming from this place over there that looks abandoned. Right. Smells travel and they'll get you caught real, real, real fast. Number three, you've got to camouflage your home. Now, when I say camouflage your home, I want you to thank Gray Man for the situation for your home. If your house still looks fantastic and everything around your house is falling apart, people are going to want to know why your house isn't falling apart. Even if that is just for them going as they move by, like, man, that looks like a good place to spend the night. And unless you want to have a very uncomfortable conversation with somebody that had no idea you were in your home, um, you need to kind of keep your house gray, man. Like you don't want your house to look overly well-maintained or overly fortified because that gets people attention. So, and, and this doesn't necessarily like track in rural, rural areas. Like, you know, if you're out in the middle of BFE and your house looks great and people can't see it, all right, well, you're good. But if you're in urban or suburban, uh, or smaller communities where you actually have neighbors, it's going to be very noticeable when that happens. Number four, 
If you do, in fact, find yourself dealing with scavengers or the people that wondered why your house looked like a really nice place to spend the night, you will have to have a plan and a well thought out process to deal with the result of your encounter. Um, meaning if you tell them to leave, they now know where you are and that you were in fact occupying it and had something to protect or they're going to get dumped and you have to come up with a solution to get rid of that food for thought. Uh, because uh, I don't know if y'all know this or not, but dead bodies contribute to disease. Some of these points I touched on in like uncomfortable truths of preparedness, but I'm looking at them through the lens of bugging in now. Uh, because if you're this is your castle, you plan on not leaving, you can't exactly put them in your backyard. Number five, it gets cold. Pretty much everywhere, not all the time, but pretty much everywhere. Take where I live in central Nebraska. When it decides to get cold, it is obnoxiously cold. The wind will absolutely kill you in an incredibly short amount of time. You are going to have to have heat. Heat, by its very nature, if you're burning something like a fireplace, generates smoke and scent, giving away your location in colder months. You may have done great during the summer and people didn't realize you were there, but as soon as it starts getting gloomy and you've got a fire going to keep warm, Either they're going to come over to investigate what's going on, or you just may have to deal with them, or they may just decide you look like a real easy loot drop. So something to keep in mind, warming fires, ways to keep yourself from not dying in the cold will give you away in the colder months. So have a plan to deal with that. You may have to be uncomfortably cold in order to provide security. Again, it's not going to be as fun as you think, and you're going to have to sacrifice things in order to stay safe. Number six. You have absolutely neglected how important repair supplies are for your bug-in location. Again, Mother Nature gets a vote. So if Mother Nature comes by in month two of this situation that will say last for 18 months and rips a bunch of shingles off, that is going to start leaking and you're going to have a problem. You have to have a solution to deal with that. Having things, screws, nails, shingles, tar paper, Tyvek, all this stuff that can help you to keep yourself maintained, even if you let the outside go down in appearance to make it more gray man camouflaged with the other houses in your location, you don't want the inside to suffer the same fate. So you have to have things in your possession that are going to make it easy for you to maintain and repair your domicile that you've chosen to bug into. Number seven. At some point, even in this world, like people are going to like knock on your door. It happens all the time. You have to come up with a plan, right, for that specific solution. Because here's the deal. If they knock on your door and you don't answer and there is no rule of law, what do you think they're going to do? They're not going to hang out outside. They're coming in, right? Maybe they knocked on the door out of you know, an overwhelming abundance of caution. Maybe their brain is still trapped into the world was normal yesterday. Um, but you now will have to make a decision. Do you answer that door? And like, condemn someone? Be like, I'm not helping you get off my lawn. Uh, so you would be actually condemning them in person or do you not answer the door and then they come in because they think it's vacant and now you're condemning them in a very real fight. But again, fights make noise, which means people are going to hear it. You also have to come up with a solution for the result of your you know, fight in this situation. But you need to have a solution, whatever that solution is, whether that is coming in from another location, getting behind them, like you better get off this land whatever, but you're going to have to have a solution because eventually you're going to come face to face with somebody that's coming into your house, maybe not to hurt you, but because they were just looking for a place to spend the night. How you deal with that, totally up to you, but something you're going to have to think about. Number eight, every single person on the planet has a pattern. Every single human, again, people in the back has a pattern. In the reconnaissance world, it's something we look at when you do surveillance on people in law enforcement or wherever. We are looking for patterns of movement and behaviors. I mentioned this in the first video where I talked about the fact that complacency will absolutely get you killed because it's been fine ten times, nine times out of the last ten 
So you didn't carry the gun just to go over here to the other corner of your yard and you got got by a dude that was waiting on you because people pay attention to patterns. Like that's the reason people are like, you know, nosy Nancy at the corner of the block that's head of the uh, HOA and the, uh, you know, crime watch area right now. That's why she knows that that red car doesn't belong in your neighborhood. And she's seen it exactly four times in the last three hours. People pay attention to patterns. Which means that if you go out every day at 6 a.m. to go get water for the rest of the day, all they got to do is catch you outside. They don't have to get into your house and deal with you on terrain you have specifically set up. They just got to wait on you to come outside because you do it every day at 6 a.m. So change up your routines and patterns. We do this all the time in law enforcement, meaning we never patrol the same way twice if we can help it. I may go Avenue A to Avenue D one day, and the next week I may go Avenue B, Avenue you know C, Avenue A, Avenue D. You're going to have to change up the way you do things so you don't create a pattern that other people pick up on. And that make no mistake, this is a conscious effort because human beings will by nature fall into a pattern of convenience and comfort. And other people will pick up on that. Remember, I've said this before, all they got to do is get it right once. You got to get it right every single day. So pay attention to patterns, do what you can to not have a pattern. People that are unpredictable have a very hard time being got because it's freaking unpredictable. If you are regular as a watch every single day, you're going to get caught. Number nine, bugging in creates what's known as a manageable defense scenario. It, however, is by no means an impenetrable defense scenario. Just because you have made certain areas easier to come in so that you could funnel people. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and watch my 13 tips and truths of home defense. You are creating the battle space and you have made it manageable because you've limited ingress to maybe two specific points and you've landed, you know, you've managed egress to a couple of points plus some emergency, but you have by no means created an impenetrable fortress. If people want in, they're coming in. Whether you like it or not, you're going to have to deal with that. But you can do what you can to create a manageable thing, allowing them to only come in or because humans are lazy, they'll take the last path of least resistance. So we need them to only come in in a place that we've dictated so that we have control over the outcome of the fight. If you don't take those steps, they're going to come in in a place you didn't think about. This is also the reason I said that you're not outside of the box enough. You need to get outside of the box and look at it from a different perspective when it comes to defensive measures. Remember, no matter what you do, it's not impenetrable unless you live in a concrete bunker 40 feet below the ground with its own, its own water, air, everything supply that is not reliant on anything sticking out of the ground that they can sabotage. So remember that. Number 10, you are not going to continue to live as you did before it all happened. Right? I know that's the goal, right? We want as little disruption as humanly possible in our normal day-to-day -day routine, the routine and lives of our family and our children. We want that so badly, which is the reason we go through the efforts of actually preparing it all. We want to maintain as close to a normal life or comfortable life as we can. But no matter what, you are not going to live the same life you did before because whether you like it or not, and you, whether you want to admit it yourself, the stuff that you had access to before is no longer available. So you're going to have to make changes in your life in order to ensure that you survive as comfortably as you can, but it's never going to be the same. You need to understand that. So now, three bonus points for you today, and I'll let you guys go on the Uncomfortable Truths of Bugging in Volume 2. The first one is, unless you live on a very large track of land away from people, bugging in is probably going to be a much shorter endeavor than you thought. Because much like anything in nature, if you, if people decided they want what you have, they are either going to take it or like a screaming three-year-old that breaks the toy that so their sister can't play with it, they're just going to ensure you don't have it either. Remember, they don't have to steal it from you. They just have to make it unusable for you. That's the game. That's how this works. That's what defensive and aerial denial, right? That's a fancy military term, right? Area denial. Area denial is simply the fact of making sure that you can't get into it. And if you do, it destroys whatever it is you were trying to get in for. So remember, they don't actually have to take it away from you. They just have to make it so that you can't stay there either. So 
unless you live on a very large tract of land way out in the rural area where nobody can come to where you're at without like a long warning sign, it's probably going to get cut short because you're going to have an incident. Bonus point number two, if you are already not managing a successful garden every single year, you are not going to successfully start a garden after shit hits the fan. Holy crap, I don't feel like I should need to say this, but it's so important because I see it all the time from people that are like, well, you know, I've got all my seeds and stuff, so when it happens, I'll just plant my garden. It takes time to develop and cultivate a successful garden, right? It just does. Your first year planting stuff may not grow crap because the soil is a poor nutrient content, but your second year, because of decomposing plant matter or what have you, you actually grow exceptionally good crops. If you're not already managing these things and creating your own crops from the ground and canning and, and, and preserving those things, and you have a steady supply of heirloom seeds so that you can continue replanting, you are not going to have a successful garden after it starts. You have to have that going now. And final bonus point number three, the only true way to ensure your survival through food is to be raising animals for harvest. We can all jar meat, we can, you know, we can can meat, we can make beef jerky, we can do all of these things. We can have autonomous power supplied freezers and stuff to keep meat fresh and preserved, but you're going to have to have some other skill sets, things like salt curing meat or low or, or low temps, you know, cold smoking meat, something like that to kill bacteria, dry that stuff out and actually make it so you can sustainably keep it is one side of it. But then again, how many guys go hunting and never see a deer? That's a real thing and it can happen. And it happens more often than people going out and finding a deer. So the only true way that you're going to have fresh meat on any consistent level is for you to actually be raising that for harvest, whether that is goats, whether that is rabbits, whatever. A lot of my friends all do chickens, so they have a ready-made supply of eggs. But I will tell you that small incremental changes in those chickens' habitat, like when he built a new house, suddenly left him not getting eggs for like eight months because the chickens were flustered, so they didn't lay eggs. That is a real thing. Those little bitty things can cause all of it to go to hell for you and not to be a reliable source you can count on. Something to keep in mind. Changes in the diet of chickens' food will actually cause them to not be productive for eggs. And what do you think is going to happen if the balloon goes up? You're not going to have access to the same food you were feeding them all the time anyway. You're going to have these kinds of setbacks. They're going to be a real problem, and you need to be thinking about them before it starts. Otherwise, you're starting at a tremendous disadvantage. So, guys, that was Uncomfortable Truths of Bugging In, Volume 2. So, until next time, take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Find me on Instagram or Facebook at AdUncleFreedom213. You can find me, UncleFreedom213 at Outlook.com. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Until next time, I'll see you later.